Hi, check this out. We've got the Siglent SDG 2122X uh, True R waveform generator. It's a pretty cool little uh, value for money, bang per buck device. You've seen me do a teardown of this, which I'll link in down below or whatever, but check this out. Switch it on and come on, come on. You can do it. You can do it. Hello, McFly. McFly, um, it's stuffed, it's rooted, it's deader than a dead dingo's donger, um, it, look, there it is, like, the, the button there is illuminated, and nothing, so it seems to go through the boot process, and it's just died in the ass. what, what, I, <laughs> I don't recall having done anything to it, um, and last time I used it, it worked, and then I went to use it again, and it's, bloody rooted. Unbelievable. Gonna have to take a look at it. Well, I don't know. Should we blame uh, number 02 and 01? Um, perhaps? <laughs> anyway, um, let's... Whip, oh, dude, it's got a bloody screw on the bottom, doesn't it? Yeah, of course it does. Unbelievable. Ah, oh, that doesn't fit. Take the one lousy screw off the back and... Come on. There we go. We're in like Flynn. Now, because we, uh, we saw it actually uh, power up before, so it went through the boot process. Um, and, oh, is there any uh, update on the sig uh, trademark Siglent Rust? No? No? It's looking good. It's looking clean as a whistle. Anyway, um, because you saw it uh, powered up, it kind of went through the, the boot sequence with the splash screen and everything. Um, so I'm going to presume that... The power supply is probably okay, but of course, golden rule of troubleshooting, thou shall test voltages. So uh, we'll check the voltages here. That's probably, I'm not sure what they are off the top of our head, but uh, we can get in there and measure those puppies. That's probably your ground. And uh, what, you might have a couple of different rails in there by the looks of it. Hmm. All right, let's go in here. There's actually, um, we don't particularly, oh, there's a lead on. That's handy. Uh, we don't particularly care about this side because uh, the main processor over here, it's got its own power up here. So let's uh, just check that. What do we expect? 5 volts? 3.3? Let's find out. 6.48. Okay, maybe there's an onboard 5 volt reg. Maybe. Huh, I would have expected a digital level rail coming out of that. Now, of course, the first thing I should have done is check for uh, visuals and things like that, make sure every nothing's obviously blown. I kind of sort of did that in my uh, subconscious head. And uh, no, everything looks fine. And then, of course, <laughs> give it a bit of a sniff and, uh, you know, like uh, check heat sinks and things like that. Just be careful, like you wouldn't touch live heat sinks and stuff like that in there. No touchy um, in the main side of things. But, you know, if you have like secondary uh, heat sinks and stuff like that, uh, Check those to make sure they're not getting too hot. You know, you can get the uh, get the old finger down here. That one there's that little SO8 package. SO8 is probably a uh, a little uh, linear reg or something like that, but it's not hot at all. Um, I don't know, you know, we've got like a hard beaty type lead down there, so that's really interesting. Got another hard beat lead over here doing the business. Um, so yeah, like. But our screen is, screen is dead, and we've got no response from the silly buttons. What the hell? Now this is interesting. They got that same 6.5 volt tap. Um, also going over to the analog board over here, even though they're supposed to be like uh, isolated, like opto. Are they opto isolated? No, they're probably not. I can't remember the tear down, but it actually. They've got a serial interface between the two, but maybe they're not... It doesn't look like there's any, like, a row of optos there. So maybe they're not. Um, okay, so I was just um, <laughs> exclaiming that the two grounds were actually connected like this between the two. And, of course, you wouldn't have that if it was uh, optically isolated between there. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's... Well, anyway, we're getting six and a half volts on there. It is pretty close to precisely six and a half volts. So I'm inclined to think that it's probably the intended value when it's like 
exactly, pretty close to exactly like a round value like that. And, you know, it sounds legit, smells legit. But I just initially expected like a 3.3 or 5. Okay, I found myself a 5 volt test point, like right down on the, what is that, some sort of little programming serial, is that the serial header or whatever? But it's labelled 5 volts, so you always look for labels, and bingo, so that's fine. Um, yeah, okay, but because we've got a big ass uh, TI uh, applications processor micro down in there, it probably needs like 1.8 or one of those stupid modern rails. So what we do there is keep it on our ground and you can probably see down in there there's a couple of SOT uh, 323 packages down there so we'll probe those puppies and have a look 3.3 volts bingo uh, and probe the tab and that's the 5 5 and 3.3 no wackers so Supplies are fine. I mean, we can get in there and, like, with the scope and, uh, like, check for, like, Rippler in it, but it's, it's a linear rig. Like, it's not going to be a problem. So, um, unless, like, on the high side of those regulators, the 6.5 volt output, maybe there's excess Ripple on there and it might be causing something, but, meh, you know, don't think it matters. All right, so I'm actually going to assume that there's no, well, it could be, it still could be a hardware issue but uh like because the damn thing boots right and and our rails in there are fine uh there might be a lower rail for uh the micro or whatever but obviously like it's getting to the boot screen like you can't do that without the micro booting up so it's like it's it's like the boot loader's fine but then it's not loading the application program at the end of it or something like that so you know either there's an issue with the uh, flash memory that's holding the application program and the boot memory is somewhere else. There it is. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm suspecting that something to, like, well, I think, <laughs> to progress with this, we really need to uh, get in the bootloader and have a look. And that's probably what that 4-pin one down there, I just checked my uh, teardown video and I don't believe that I actually... Um, got a serial uh, probe on there and actually checked to find like a RS-232 boot uh, interface on there or a serial uh, UART boot interface but there's most likely to be one so and I, oh maybe I did probe those and I didn't find anyway I think I need to find some sort of a uh, serial boot thing I mean it does have an SD card uh, slot down in the back there, a little micro SD, but uh, that it didn't come with anything. So that's presumably, you know, to do the factory, maybe the factory bootloader or, you know, the diagnostics or testing. Maybe they put a testing SD card in there or something like that, um, some automated testing or whatnot. But anyway, I like it's most likely, anyway, it could be those pins, could be these ones along here, could be those ones. I don't know. I'm going to have to find a serial port and we should at least get some boot sequence. If we can find that serial port, then booting this thing up, I mean, it, it gets to here, gets to the splash screen, so there's almost certainly going to be some boot code coming out of it. So maybe we can find a uh, clue in there. All right, before we hook up our scope probe, just make sure we've got the right ground because that's a trap for young players. So I'm going to go from the uh, circuit that we know to be the circuit ground down here to the earth terminal on the back, and everything's hunky-dory, so we can just... You know, clamp our crow probe onto the side there. Yes, it's a crow probe, not this scope probe rubbish. Now, am I blind? I'm on this, uh, the new Siglent scope. Might as well use the new uh, 1104 four channel XE uh, jobby. Uh, great bang per buck, um, which I haven't reviewed yet. Sorry, super busy and now it's the holiday period in the Kickstarter. Anyway, um, I didn't um, see a way to actually visually see on the channel whether or not you've got the times 10 probe set up or not. So it just gave you the one volt per division. You didn't know what it was actually set to. It would have been nice to have the enunciator like um, it ID'd in there. Anyway. Right, so what we need to do is start probing up its clacker and uh, just have the crow probe ground on there. There we go. So. Oh, is there anything there? Nothing there. Hello. There we go. Found it. Ha! Straight off the bat. Look at that. Let me uh, 
we can single shot capture that. And let me reboot this. Yeah, well, look at that. There you go. Well, we got something. We got one. There you go. That's serial if I've ever seen it. Bingo. Found it. It's that uh, header along the bottom there like that. So that pin there, pin two, is it? Pin one is five volts. Presumably pin four is ground. Double check that. Pin two is the output. Bingo. We can hook that up to our... Uh, RS-232 board. Well, it's not RS-232 because it's not RS-232 signals levels, is it? TTL based. You know what I mean. TTL signal level. Zero to five volt stuff. <clears throat> Acceptance. Not that. It's one, two, three. 3.3. 3. Rubbish. Yeah, modern crap. And of course, for something like this, that uh, a typical boot dump in, dump in a product like this, if you've seen previous teardown videos where I've done it, it's a ton of text. It's not something you want to be de decoding, dicking around decoding on your scope. It's just pointless. So get yourself a, like a serial interface board like this one's very handy and then just plug it up and uh, use a uh, serial terminal program on a PC or whatnot. Sorry to go completely medieval on the uh, screen capture here. Just recording the screen, but bingo, we're in like Flynn, 115k uh, board, of course, 8 in one your usual uh, stuff that you get, uh, usual interface standard you get. Here we go, UBI max sequence number, boom, boom. So, like, everything's booting up, right? Available PEBs, I don't know what PEBs are, uh, problem that exist before, because of PEBCAC. Um, image sequence number, is that, like, the image? I don't know. Uh, no, that's the... Okay, so that's uni is UBI Universal Boot Interface, I believe. Something like that. I don't know all the details of all this uh, newfangled software stuff. But uh, no, it's create, 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 log. Um, anyway, skippy command is uh, starting device command, GPIB, USB init, USB core registered new interface. Uh, it's all, it all seems to be happening. Um... So, I don't know. Then we get down here and start task. User interface. That's it. So, like, the process is working. So, like, what's the, what's the story? Um, it's just, you know, the user interface does not start. And, of course, we don't get uh, the keyboard. Can't do anything in the key, front panel keypad or anything like that. So, I don't know. Anyone got any ideas? Um, hmm, leave it in the comments.